So uh, good afternoon and good morning to everyone. On behalf of myself, my partners, and the speakers who have so graciously taken the time this morning to share their expertise, I'd like to welcome you to the second session of the Tribal Nations Partnership Building a Presence in E-Commerce webinar series. We hope through these sessions to increase American Indian, Alaska Native, and Native Hawaiian participation in the growing online marketplace for art and craft work. My name is Ken Van Way, and I'm a program specialist with the U.S. Department of the Interior's Indian Arts and Crafts Board. I will be your host today. I'd like to recognize the hard work of my partners, Susan Anthony of the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, and Mark Thompson and Lynn Wilson of Indian Dispute Resolution Services Incorporated, a nonprofit organization whose ACORN project provides small business advice for Native American entrepreneurs. As Susan mentioned in her introduction to our first session, this project was launched last year in response to President Biden's executive order on economic relief related to the COVID-19 pandemic, in which he instructed federal agencies to prioritize activities <clears throat> that provide relief to individuals, families, and small businesses, as well as to state, local, territorial, and tribal governments. We would like to welcome back attendees from our first program as well as those logging in for the first time. If you missed the first presentation, I'm happy to inform you that it is available on the Patent and Trademark Office's YouTube page for viewing. Future presentations will occur from 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on the second Thursday of each month, with the next session, Building Your Identity, scheduled for May 12, 2022. Future topics are listed on the registration page, but we welcome feedback. And if there are topics of interest that you would like us to cover, we will see if that is something that we can accommodate. If you have any questions during the course of the event, we have opened the written chat and we'll do our best to accommodate. With that said, I would like to welcome the, welcome the panelists for today's session, the e-commerce primer. They are Andrew Shaw, from Big Cartel, Cheney Lightfoot from eBay, Tracy Riddler from Shopify, and Lynn Wilson from Indian Dispute Revolu Resolution Services, who will provide some information on operating your own website. We have had some last minute cancellations, and I'll be stepping in to provide some bare bones information about other businesses to cover the widest set of popular options. My presentation of this information does not constitute an endorsement of these services, and our lack of inclusion of particular businesses is a matter of time and resources. If there are other sales venues that you feel are worth mentioning, please feel free to drop that information in chat or contact the partners later. And with that out of the way, I am going to pop in to my own presentation. Which is the general introduction. To our e-commerce primer. So one of the things that we really want to, to work with people on and get the information out here on is about deciding what's best for you. And the way that this presentation is structured and the, the way that we structured the program is, is kind of based around resource management. And the, the, the big resources that you have as you're getting online and looking at, at getting your work out there and entering the e-commerce world are time, money, and connection. And I'm using the term connection here because I could not find a better abstract term for what I'm talking about, because that, that's about your technical ability to connect to the internet, uh, some sort of some infrastructure things, but then also just the, the degree to which you are comfortable interacting and the w degree to which you do interact in the virtual world. So I've, I've come up with some general categories looking at these things over time. Uh, 
based on increasing levels of investment in those kind those particular resources. Uh, directories, social media, auction and sales platforms, and your own website. So directories are things that are they're online listings that are maintained by organizations usually. They're targeted to particular interests. Perhaps it's tribally run, perhaps it's looking at, at native businesses, uh, perhaps it's a reenactor website and, and focusing on, on Woodland region or something like that. There are a variety of directories th that are published by different organizations. The beauty of those is that they are a low resource investment that you can provide information, other people will put it up, other people will maintain it. Uh, in the words of Ron Popeil, you can set it and forget it. Another important thing, especially over the last few years with, with increasing importance, is uh, social media. Uh, one of the big advantages to social media is you may already be there. If you're using Instagram, if you're using Facebook, if you're using Twitter, if you're using any number of other sites, you may already be out there and interacting people and it is a, a fairly smooth transition to start involving your marketing if you have not already. Social media allows you to maintain connections with people who are interested in your work. It's a very convenient format for sharing photographs and links. A lot of social media programs have integrated instant messaging systems that you can use to keep in touch with, with buyers without having to worry about your email. Uh, many social media sites, including Facebook and Instagram, are starting to include uh, integrated shopping apps to more resemble just a, a direct sales uh, website. You can control the pace of your engagement because you're deciding when you're going to post and you're deciding what you're going to post, that people can react and you can react to other people, but it really puts a lot of the control of the pace of what you were doing in your own hands. And one caveat on this is uh, consider if you want to pursue social media, separating your personal and business accounts. Uh, that way, when you're trying to sell some of your work, People don't have to wade through photos of your grandchildren. And likewise, people who just want to see pictures of your cats don't have to sort through all the other things too. Uh, a lot of social media sites also make it very easy to transition between your multiple accounts. So they, they encourage multiple accounts and make it easy to, to transition. One example that Susan had brought to my attention which was a uh, big news over the course of the quarantine was the uh, use of uh, Instagram and other social media by people selling beadwork and, and other work. And a, a big success story involved uh, Taylor Gutierrez, who, who had a business called Kamama Beadwork through Instagram. She had uh, put her work up for sale. Here's her, her web page, or her, uh, Instagram page and just started selling out as soon as she put it up. And here's some of her work. So she made it. They had articles in the New York Times. They had articles in the Cherokee Phoenix. Uh, and it was, it was fairly newsworthy. And it's a good example of using social media to sell your work. Auction and sales platforms, which we, we have some guests from today. Uh, are a great way to, to get involved because you are connecting with an established business that, that is maintaining their web presence. They provide space for you to list your product descriptions and prices. You can post photographs. They have direct messaging systems so that you can interact with potential customers answering questions. Uh, they often have systems set to process payments through the site. And just to, to be clear out front, a lot of these charge store fees, listing fees, or commissions on sales. And hopefully we'll be able to get a little bit of insight for, from individual speakers on some of the, the fees and commissions involved with using their sites. 
Lynn will be talking later about designing your own website. Out of all the options we're laying out here today, uh, designing your own website is the most resource intensive, but it does allow you to maximize control of your business and image, and it's not necessarily as hard as it sounds. And also going forward, don't feel that you're limited to any one of these options, that you can participate in a lot of them at the same time. You can reach different pools of potential customers. It can improve your standing in search engines as you have multiple listings that people are going to. And it also, you can use different, you can use your social media to direct people to your website or to your Etsy shop or your eBay shop or, or a variety of things. That there's, there's a certain amount of synergy you can create with that. Uh, that's sort of my broad introduction. And I want to hop in to my, my first topic, be it which I'm running on, which is the directory listings. So the Indian Arts and Crafts Board, the, since that's where I work, has the directory listing that I am most familiar with, which is our source directory of American Indian and Alaska Native owned and operated arts and crafts businesses. Uh, there's a link there to, to the page. Uh, it's a source directory uh, with uh, free listings that we provide to over 450 businesses owned by enrolled members of federally recognized Indian tribes or Alaska Native villages or corporations. Here's an example from a, our page. So the source directory and its entries are promoted through the Indian Arts and Crafts Board's website, through consumer publications. We uh, take out Facebook ads and post it on our Facebook page. Uh, and I've also taken out online and print advertisements over the last few years to try and direct traffic to the site. Source directory listees also receive a signed certificate of appreciation from the Indian Arts and Crafts Board, which some people find nice to have up in their store, or even I've seen some folks at arts and craft shows who have that up in their booth. To be listed in our source directory, you need to be an enrolled member of a federally recognized Indian tribe, Alaska Native Village, or Alaska Native Corporation. If the business is run by an organization, it has to be formally organized under tribal, state, or federal law. If there's no shop or location ready, readily available to the public, we ask that they be prepared to conduct mail or online business. And most importantly, I guess second most importantly, the majority of the products offered must be art or craft products handmade by members of federally recognized Indian tribes. I have some examples of some other sites that have these. Uh, the Cherokee Nation has a uh, Cherokee Nation certified Indian owned businesses list. Of course, these are just some examples and not nearly comprehensive that I'm constantly finding new examples and just wanted to throw up a few here. Uh, Cook Inlet Region Incorporated has its own native artist directory for shareholders in the Cook Inlet Region Incorporated in Alaska. And the Choctaw Nation have their own artist reg registry. Again, Check with your tribe or, or your other organization and see if, if there are a variety of these registries and, and directories that you can get put in. Uh, it requires just the minimal amount of effort to get, get your information up there, and it's available for people who, who are searching for it. And that takes us to the end of my phase. I believe. No, no, it doesn't because we had a cancellation. Sorry, folks. Uh, still going to have to listen to me for a few minutes. So, Amazon Handmade. I am 
again, putting this information out here because it is a thing that you may be interested in. Uh, but I am not necessarily endorsing it, but it is a program that Amazon has created to promote the work of uh, artists, craftsmen. Uh, it's for artisans only, and you have to fill out an application to join. To join, they require that you have a professional selling account, which is about $40 a month, but apparently that account fee would be waived if you're accepted into the handmade program. Uh, according to their material, the only fee that they charge is a 15% referral fee on sales that are made through Amazon Handmade. But I would, of course, advise anybody interested in any of these programs to carefully review the conditions and terms. And with that, I would like to pass the baton to Andrew Shaw from Big Cartel. Awesome, thanks so much, Ken. Um, and my buddy Christopher is gonna run my slides for me. Okay, do oh, you see it? I do, thanks so much. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'm Andrew Shaw. I'm here from Big Cartel to tell you a little bit about what uh, our service offers. You can go to the next slide. And that's me. Um, I'm a musician and a designer and an artist who also works on Big Cartel's marketing team. Um, and I live in Salt Lake City, Utah. Next slide. So a little bit about Big Cartel. Uh, we started in Salt Lake City in 2005. The two guys who started our company were musicians and they were looking for a place where they could sell their band merch online and back in 2005 there just wasn't an ideal spot for them so they decided to make it themselves and we've been operating for musicians artists small businesses uh, ever since big cartel has very intentionally stayed a very small company and we currently have under 40 employees that keep our platform running every day uh, we, we have this scrappy independent spirit that's driven forward by values to embrace change, focus on utility, to place people over profit, to drive bravery and to empower others. And we, uh, we see our mission as making tools and breaking down barriers so people can operate online on their own terms. Let's go to the next slide. So Big Cartel has three levels of subscription plans. Our gold plan is completely free. It's free forever. Uh, with our gold plan, you can have a shop that lists up to five products at any given time. And um, there's no listing fees, no transaction fees, and you can sell unlimited quantities of those five products. So let's say you have a t-shirt design. Uh, you can sell lots of different sizes and colors of that same t-shirt design. You can sell as many as you can sell, um, and that still just counts as one product. Our first paid plan is called our Platinum Plan. It's $9.99 a month. Um, again, no listing fees, no transaction fees, and you can sell as much as you want. Your catalog, catalog can list up to 50 products at any given time. With our first uh, paid plan here, the Platinum Plan, you unlock other premium features like inventory tracking, um, having more images per product and the ability to edit the advanced code of your shop to really make it look however you want it to look. And then our largest plan is the diamond plan at $19.99 a month, has all the same features as the platinum plan. It's just uh, created for larger catalogs. So if you have a lot of uh, one of a kind pieces, you might exceed that 50 product limit and go up into the, the diamond plan where you can list up to 500 products. Let's go ahead to the next slide. So I wanna walk you uh, through just a little bit about how Big Cartel works. What you see here is a screenshot from a shop on Big Cartel called Beyond Buckskin. Uh, this is the customer's point of view. So when a customer comes to their shop, they see this landing page that really, they can put their images in here and, and, and showcase their work in this nice big splashy front page. With Big Cartel, you have a standalone website that's gonna reflect your unique brand and personality. 
Um, that's different from other marketplace sites like um, like Etsy is a popular marketplace site where your shop is um, searchable with lots of other shops. With Big Cartel, your shop is just your shop. And when people come there, they're only coming to shop at, at your store. Uh, it's very product focused. Um, so when you get you to your Big Cartel shop, people will browse through your catalog, add items to your cart and check out. And then you can also add custom pages for additional information. So like you can see here Beyond Buckskin at the top has added an About Us page that's really popular. They also have uh, Join Club BB, that's their own special um, club that they've created. So you can create those sorts of things in your Big Cartel shop as well. Let's go to the next page. So um, this is a, a screenshot of Beyond Buckskin's products page. And you can see I've pointed out the category. So they have a really large catalog. They represent over 40 uh, native artists in their shop. And so they have a lot of different products and you can give them these different categories. So as a, when a shopper comes to your shop, if they're just looking for rings or just looking for accessories, they can click on those and really narrow down to precisely the, uh, the products that they want to add to their cart. Let's go to the next. And this is a, a screenshot of what an individual product looks like within their shop. So since they're on one of our paid plans, they have five images to really showcase all the different ways that these earrings can work. Um, and they also have uh, added a little feature called that we call the artist feature where they can link their artists together since they represent several artists. You could click on one of these artist names and see all the products that that particular artist has in their shop. Uh, if, you're, if your store just is your own work, then you don't need to have that kind of uh, a feature turned on. Next slide. Uh, also, you can add product options. Um, so like this particular ring probably comes in several different sizes, and that's just a little drop down menu that your customers can select from. Um, when you're looking at those product numbers, right, the, the five product limit for the gold shop, the 50 product limit for the platinum shop, um, that in, you can have multiple sizes for those products in here, and this is still just one product. Also, if you're selling you know, t-shirts with different colors, if you're selling candles with different scents, uh, you can add those as different product options that people can select from. Let's go to the next slide. So this is a little example of our different themes. We have 18 themes that are all free for you to choose. And the theme is gonna be the underlying foundation of your shop's design. So all six of these shops, although they look really different, they're all using the same big cartel platform. Um, and I really love what people can do creatively with their shops to, to make it look very much just like their own website. Let's go to the next slide. So here is uh, an image of the back end of the shop. So when you own your own shop and you're going to go in and you're going to design your shop, this is the design area that you as the shop owner sees. Uh, you'll see the big area kind of taking up three fourths of the right side of the image there. It's just a preview of what your shop is going to look like for others. And then all of the ways to, to customize your shop are there in the left hand column. This is also really easy to do with a cell phone um, and it's great to be able to like make a little change, see what it's going to look like. Uh, and then once you're ready for your website to change, you can publish it. Um, we have free design themes, like I said, 18 themes right now that are all free to kind of flip through so you can play around a lot with how your shop looks. And we make the customization really simple by choosing colors, choosing different fonts, um, adding your own images to a homepage slideshow, that sort of thing. Let's go to the next. So uh, the heart of your shop is going to be products. And so this is showing you what your product page looks like on the back end. Again, this is just how your product looks to you as the shop owner and all of the different information that you could possibly put in there. You give it a name, you add images, a description. Those categories are really easy to set up in the prices and so on. Uh, next slide. So with Big Cartel, it's 
really easy to change your shop as you go. And so I like to point out a couple of things that are important to get right at the very start. So um, in your admin, we do ask for your location um, to because we help uh, collect sales tax for any U.S. shops that are sending uh, products to U.S. customers. Uh, so we ask for your location to make sure that we're um, calculating the sales tax correctly. And then you also put in your currency. You want to make sure that the currency is correct. And also you'll connect payment processors. We work with Stripe to, um, to help uh, with credit card payments, and we work with PayPal as well. You can connect both of those or just one, whichever is your favorite. But getting that payment processor set up right from the beginning makes everything else a lot easier. Then everything else you can adjust as you go. You can change your product prices. Maybe you'll see that something sells out really fast and you want to increase the price. It's super easy to change. Or maybe something's not moving and you want to put it on sale. That's easy to change as well. You can change your shipping rates, which I think is one of the hardest things to dial in as you're putting your shop together. So sometimes people get a little scared to launch if they don't know exactly what to charge for shipping. But I think it's great to get your shop out there, start to get a couple of sales and understand how much it's gonna cost to ship something close to you, ship something across the country, and then you can really change and dial in those shipping rates. You can always change your product details. Um, we advise making your product descriptions really rich. All of those words that you type in there are going to help people understand your product better and are also going to help with search engines uh, like Google to, to point people towards your products. And like I said, you can change your shop design. Everything is open to, to being changed down the road. Let's go to the next slide. So I wanted to point out a few different ways that you can level up your shop. Next slide. So these are kind of above and beyond uh, the basic setup. So you can uh, register a custom domain. Custom When you get a big cartel shop, your shop could be like andrewsphotos.bigcartel.com. But if you want your shop to just say andrewsphotos.com, you can buy and register a custom domain. They're usually about $12 a year and you get them. There's, there's lots of different domain providers that you could register with. And you can connect those to your big cartel shop so that your shop looks even more like just your shop. We also have a big cartel app for Apple phones and um, Android devices. And that's a really great way to manage your shop on the go. You don't have to have a desktop computer at all to have a big cartel shop. Everything can be managed through the phone. One of the coolest things that I like about the big cartel app is the in-person checkout. So when I'm at a, uh, a pop-up shop or at an art fair, I can do transactions with people in person through the Big Cartel app. It'll adjust my inventory in my online shop so it all stays up to date and it helps with uh, credit card processing and that sort of thing. You can also create discounts uh, and discount codes. You can send them to whoever you want so you can have special codes for special audiences and, and really know who's coming and using those codes in your shop. If you want to have, you know, 75% off for mom, you can do that and just give mom that code. And nobody else gets to use it. And then we also have several integrations to, to add additional features to your shop. Let's go to the next slide. Just a quick overview of what those integrations could be. Um, a really popular one is a print on demand service like Printful or Art of Wear. Um, where you don't actually have any inventory yourself. You'll upload your designs to this to this other website, Printful, and when you get an order, then they will actually print the product and send it out. So that's great for T-shirts or, uh, you know, baseball caps, those sorts of products. Um, it's a great way to be able to, to sell work without having to deal with the inventory control and out, without having to uh, even ship out the product because they'll print it and ship it to your customer. We also have lots of integrations for shipping. Um, the one I really like for US shipping is called Pirate Ship. They help uh, help you print shipping labels, buy postage. Um, they often get you a better deal than if you would just walk into the post office. MailChimp's a really popular integration. They help you on, on a very basic level. They help with um, e-newsletters so you can connect with your customers and collect their uh, email addresses and stay in touch with people who've previously bought your products. Um, but MailChimp also offers a lot more than just, just email, but you'll have to get a pitch from them for everything else that they do. And then um, three others that I really like are Elfsight, Power, and Zapier. 
um, they all create these different widgets or connections between things. It's a real great way to, you know, add reviews to your products or add different slideshows in different areas. Um, and those are, yeah, just great to check out. Let's go to the next slide. So um, this is a little overview of where you can find help with your shop when you're getting set up. We have a great support team um, at support at bigcartel.com. We do all of our support through email or through a messenger through, um, through your admin so that we can send you screenshots and videos and really help you with any aspect of your shop. Uh, we also have a great help site, help.bigcartel.com, where you can get um, more information about how to do things within your admin and how our product works. And then uh, the marketing team runs a blog, blog.bigcartel.com, which um, we have a lot of articles on there about business, how to, um, inspiration, highlighting different artists. Um, that's a great place to hang out. Uh, next slide. Oh, great. That was it. <laughs> that's my thank you. I think we're going to take questions at the end of the presentation, so I won't take them now. But well, um, we, we do have a few. Oh, I'm oh sorry. go ahead, Lynn. I'm, I'm back on now. Hopefully, hopefully <laughs> everything is working good for me now. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you don't mind, Andrew, for us to go ahead and take some questions. That oh, absolutely. Yeah. You. Um, and so uh, Misty King asks, how can we work with Big Cartel Shop for websites and creating an in-person store? Um, it, you know, Misty, I don't know if you had a, a, a more specific question than that, or Andrew, if you have something that you can add to that that maybe you didn't cover. Sure. Um, if you wanted to use your big cartel shop, our, our product is really focused on being an online shop. But um, if you had an in-person storefront or if you're going to those art, art pop-up shops or craft fairs, things like that, you can still use the app to check out. Um, I'm not sure if it would really be the best thing if you're really just trying to have an in-person shop. I don't know if Big Cartel using that for all of your transactions would be best for you. Um, but um, yeah, that's how I would use it. All right, thank you. Um, and another question, how well does it integrate with social media platforms such as Facebook and Instagram and other shipping platforms? Yeah, so we do have um, ways to connect with Facebook and Instagram uh, to so you'll end up creating a, a, a shop on those platforms and then have when people click to purchase, it'll send them to your big cartel shop. Um, Facebook is a little hard to manage sometimes. <laughs> it's a pretty big platform. So we do have uh, on our help site, we have a step by step process for how to get uh, get their permission to put your shop on their on their platform. Thank um, so is Stripe and PayPal the only payment options that you have on Big Cartel right now? They are, yes, yeah. Well, those are two good ones, that's good. Um, and and you mentioned that you can completely run your store from the app. If you don't have a desktop, you can set your store up and everything. Absolutely, yeah, and it's, it's actually really great if you're taking photos of your products with your phone that you can, um, you know, you don't have to send them to a different computer. You can just upload them right from the app. Um, also, the, the website admin is great with a, a mobile browser as well. So you don't even need to download the app if you didn't want to use the app. Right. Um, we have one last question here. Is there a big cartel client that hosts different or various native artists? Um, well, and I know Beyond Buckskin is definitely one that you highlighted and they do. Yeah, Beyond Buckskin is is really great. I feel like from the searching that I've done of our different shops, I think they're an, an excellent um, platform that brings together lots of different artists. Um, I'm not sure what their process is for um, taking new artists into their catalog, but um, that's something that you could reach out to them about. That's, you know, we, we really respect that each company that uses Big Cartel is running their own their own business, and so we allow them to maintain those on their own. So, Andrew, you also mentioned where people could get some support. Um, do you know, are there any, I, I was going to try to look, but then I'm like, I'm not going to open up any more browsers <laughs> on my computer. Do you, are there any, you know, videos or anything out there that, because I'm kind of a video person myself when I want to learn something. Absolutely. We do have a YouTube channel. 
Um, and video is something that we're in our marketing team, we're talking about getting a lot more videos uh, put up this year. But um, also on our help site, if there is a video related to the topic, we put it in our help site. So if you're um, trying to connect your custom domain from name cheap, let's say we have a video that can, can show you the steps because a lot of the times it's better to, to see it in person. So are there any common pitfalls maybe that you've seen new um, store owners or, you know, is there like some challenges that kind of stand out that maybe people need to be aware of when they're starting? Um, you know, I feel like one of the common things that I see is that people get really timid about launching their shop. And that's why I had that particular slide about like all the things you can change, because I think the, the best thing is to, to get it out there and to, you know, once it's out there and people are really interacting with your shop, then you can see any changes you need to make. But um, yeah, I worked on the support team for a year and a half when I first started here. And I had a lot of questions about like, oh, I want to get this just right or that just right. And um, yeah, I say just go for it. Just really get it out there. Yeah, that's good advice because I brought in that too. You know, if someone's developing a website or something, they feel like they have to get everything just perfect before they let the public see it. And and that's my advice too. always just get it out there. It's never going to be perfect. <laughs> you'll yeah. just, you'll just and, tweak as you go along. And ship, shipping rates, I think, is particularly one of those areas that people, you know, it's hard to know what you should charge. And uh, we, we don't have an integration that like decides on the moment at the moment exactly how much it's going to cost to chart to, to send something to your customer, because there's also lots of other variables like how expensive your envelopes are, or if you wanted to include any, you know, special thank you notes or uh, stickers. Um, I, I send temporary tattoos to people when they buy stuff from my shop. Um, all of those things are really fun. And I add a little bit to my shipping charges in order to make sure that I'm not losing money on each sale. Okay, right. Um, that's, that's really a cool idea. So as far as marketing, um, you know, I know like, of course, like, you know, if you're using something like Etsy, Etsy's out there marketing your products and stuff for you. But what kind of support can do you guys offer in the way of marketing? So Big Cartel doesn't actually do a lot of marketing support. Um, I think Big Cartel is really great if you're building your own audience or you have your own audience. So um, we have seen a lot of shops start with a platform like Etsy where they can get exposure to more people um, through that marketplace search. Um, but then when they have some repeat customers, uh, they might open up a big cartel shop to, um, to really have that more personalized uh, website that looks just like their brand. Um, and also our, since we don't charge transaction fees and things like that, the overall cost might end up being lower. Yeah, definitely, okay. Well, Andrew, thank you for sharing Big Cartel with us, and I oh, appreciate thanks you. Thanks so much, and I'll stick around for the, the whole webinar, so if any other questions come up, I'll be here. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, Cheney, I think I, I, I will just throw on uh, Etsy at the end here. I think they're, they're the conspicuous by their absence, so uh, <laughs> if you would like to, to move on just to, to make sure that we can get everybody who's a speaker through. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you so much. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Make sure you can see. Okay. All right, so my name is Cheney Lightfoot and I just wanna thank you all for taking the time to attend today's session and you know I'm really grateful to be here and to be able to share about the opportunities that eBay has for you as a seller um, and I do believe that the time is now right to to start your business and to begin in e-commerce or to branch out if you're already on e-commerce this is a great opportunity for you so just a little bit of background about myself um, I'm a part of eBay's growth advisor team and I have been with eBay for almost five years now I get to work with sellers in many different capacities from uh, webinars to uh, just coaching businesses, either small businesses or large biz businesses. And so I absolutely love what I do. I love being able to help sellers 
And the biggest impact is being able to grow sellers' legacies on eBay. So um, just want to get started with everything. Um, our objective today is to understand how eBay provides economic empowerment and a global customer base to our sellers um, and just being able to reach so many different buyers across many different markets. And what we'll do to achieve that objective is to cover a few key topics. So why choose eBay? Understanding some common pitfalls for, uh, for new businesses, understanding our fee structure and support um, that you have for your growing business. So eBay connects people and we build communities to create economic opportunity for everyone. At eBay, we create pathways that connect millions of sellers and buyers in 190 markets across the world. And so our technologies is really what empowers us to be able to help our customers uh, build their brands and show their uniqueness um, by having edit our editable stores. So you're able to edit your stores and that's some of our key technologies that we have, one of them at least. Um, you know, we also provide everyone the opportunity to grow and thrive no matter who they are or, or where they are. Um, we know that through the work that we do as eBay employees, we're able to help impact our customers with our expansions, with personalization, um, our communities with eBay for charity and our planet with our focus markets being in um, certified refurbish and seller refurbish. So the first step to being a part of this mission is to really just register an eBay account. Um, and if you already have an eBay account to begin listing. Um, I will walk you through some of the some of the common pitfalls a little bit later, but I want to share with you some of the support that we have for you uh, along your journey. So we have many different ways to get connected to to eBay um, through eBay Academy. Um, through our seller center, through customer service, whether that be email, chat, or phone, um, and our discussion boards. So some, just a little bit about eBay Academy. It, um, it has changed from seller school to our eBay Academy program, which we're able to give you detailed information about how to start your business, uh, whether you're new or you're in the middle or you're growing, right? We have many different steps along the way and it's self-paced learning environment um, that you can do at your desk or on your mobile device. Um, so that you're able to learn and grow and just really understand what it takes to grow a business in e-commerce. And then we also have our seller center, which has a vast library of our searchable learning resources from insights about, um, I'm getting an echo. That's a, okay, sorry. So insights about um, that being free returns, um, free shipping, how to add value, how to give trust, how to grow. We have so much within the seller center. And then of, cus of course, our customer service and our help pages. Um, and then the discussion board where you can connect with people within your community um, or other communities that have already asked a question or are able to answer your question directly through the discussion boards. So let's go ahead and get into what our common pitfalls are. You know, our objective today is understanding that. And we, we know that our eBay is similar to a lot of the different platforms that are out there, some that are here today. Um, but I really wanna be able to walk you through what those common pitfalls are and then give you some steps on how you can get going right away. So whether you're on eBay, or where, wherever you are, you'll be able to use these uh, details to help you to grow your business. Um, and so those three um, umbrella topics are listing, shipping, and then customer service are the three things that I find as being um, like issues that you'll run into if you're not careful and being aware of it. So first, when you're, you're starting to list, uh, make sure you're being proactive and this will help you on the end uh, like the, the end time of, re, um, sorry, this will help you at the end of your customer experience. So you'll be able to make sure that you're covering your, your basis. So we have categorize your listings properly, 
You want to include your relevant key terms and make sure that your pricing is competitive. So your items are unique. You can do some market research and compare all across the board to see what your price ranges could be at, or you can just do it as a price that you're at now and then analyze as you go to determine what your price point is. You wanna make sure that you're using high quality photos to showcase your uniqueness. It doesn't have to necessarily be a white background, but it is helpful to put your first image as a white background so you're able to utilize the, the Google placement on different, um, on different channels outside of your platform that you're on. And you're making sure that you're using your item specifics. And on eBay, you wanna make sure that you're doing your recommended item specifics and of course the required item specifics. Um, and the reason being is when your buyers are, are searching for that particular item, they're looking to find you easily. So making sure that you're using your keywords and your titles um, would be extremely helpful to be found and to make the sales that you're looking for. And offer several different shipping options and have a competitive return policy. You can look across the market again just to see what others are having listed for their return policies and if it applies to the type of item that you sell. Okay, and so then we also have um, one of the great things about eBay and having a business is that you're able to set your own standards of practice that works for your life and to navigate common pitfalls and potential limitations to the communication access is to follow these three steps. You want to start out with a strategy, and that's really creating a logistic roadmap um, is what I found. Having um, a struggle within a, a rural area is not is not really knowing where you're going at that point, right? So you want to make sure you're creating a strategy. Um, so that includes estimating the weights of your product in its packaged item before you actually um, are shipping it off, making sure you're doing that within the listing process and knowing what shipping carriers are near you and how long it takes for you to get to them and how long it takes for um, the item or how to get to those places as well. And really just begin to create a relationship with your carriers in your area and let them know that you're going to be partnering with them to grow your e-commerce business so that they're aware that there will be more packages coming from you so that they can give you tips and tricks to better um, that experience. So some of the other things is shipping. So set the right expectation with your shipping service that you actually list on your site um, on eBay and follow through what the service is. So example, if you're, you're shipping with USPS, then you want to follow through with that expectation that you have. And the cool thing about on eBay is when you list your item, you put in the weights and the dimensions of that package item and the carrier that you're choosing. And we'll give you a calculation about how much it will cost to actually get to, um, to get your product to your customer, dependent on the zip code. So the last thing here is to have a handling time that works for you, right? So you want to, the handling time is the number of days that it takes for you to get your, your, your label printed and to get your item shipped off. So be aware of how long it will take for you to actually process your packaging after you've received an order. And that will help you to mitigate any issues that you come across. So some tips for preparing your package. You wanna use sturdy and clean packaging that is new and free from old labels. Um, if you're trying to reuse some of your packaging that you have, make sure that it's um, clean and ready to go. You also want to choose packaging that fits your item snugly, but leave enough room for some of the materials that you'll put inside and wrap that package, wrap your items, your precious items um, in tissue paper or bubble wrap, something that can make sure that it's going to be protected within that shipping journey. And then if you're shipping boxes, make sure you're using tape that's about two inches wide so that your products don't fall outside of the box. And 
be sure to clearly label your package so that when you do drop it off at the post office or you know whichever carrier is near you, they're able to, to read that and it's able to arrive to your customer without any issues, any hiccups along the way. Um, and so the, the biggest piece here is to add that personal touch. You, you can use a thank you note, you can use stickers that are branded for your company, but really make sure you're taking your branding from the front face all the way to within the package and how you want your mm. products to be displayed when your customer opens up that box. And so lastly here for some of the common pitfalls that you'll see is communication. And that's the end of your transaction. So it can be either be while your customer is shopping and asking questions, or it can be after. You want to make sure that you're setting a, a consistency for your business, whether that be I'm going to respond in 24 hours, I'm going to respond in 48 hours. What is that for you? Show up and make sure that you're, you're doing that for your customers so that you can um, get rid of any issues that you will run into. Um, so responding to those messages quickly, make sure you're positive, be professional, um, and be personable, right? Like showcase like who you are in those messages. And then keep in mind, you, you will be responding either prior to sale or after sale. And that can really help to mitigate any returns from being open, depending on how fast you actually reply to those messages. So, um, Customers don't always want to return an item. Sometimes they just need to have a conversation about something. And I know that sellers have been able to stop a return from happening just by communicating. I've been able to do it myself as well. So keep that in mind when you are approaching your customers. And then also avoid the you're the expert and you, your customer isn't approach, right? Um, what that would look like is, you know, you know a lot about the products that you're selling, so maybe the customer doesn't know. Um, if that's the case, then just try to switch it into a different framework or maybe like have someone else respond to it or have um, just run, by, run it by someone else before you send the message off to your customer. And so lastly, we're gonna talk about the fee structure that we have. So in general, there are three types of fees for eBay sellers. And we have the insertion fee, the final value fee, and the optional upgrade fee. So the insertion fee is, um, it's a listing fee that is charged every time you create a listing or create or relist a listing on eBay, regardless of if it sells. And it begins to calculate for each category and it's mostly around 35 cents. But the cool thing about our site is that you have 250 free insertions each month. And so you you're able to maximize that and be able to really start selling. Now we also have the final value fee. And what a final value fee is, um, it's, it's charged once you have a successful sale. So, you know, your customer goes and purchases your item, you ship your item off, that's when you would incur one of those final value fees. Now, our fees do charge between 3% to um, upwards to 15%, that is the max. Um, for the type of items that you sell, they'll be around 10%, 10.2%. And if you are listing in a personalization, depending on the, the size of your store, um, you could be experiencing um, no final value fees, right? For having a personalized store. And if you have questions about that, I'll be able to give you some details about where you can reach out to at the end. And so, and finally, we have the listing advancements. And that would be charged only if you add special features to your listings and it varies based on the prices. So again, um, you know, I want you to be successful. And so there are other videos that you can find online and you can check us out here at YouTube at the, or eBay for Business YouTube and just find out a little bit more. And then also if you have questions, you can email me at personalization at ebay.com. Hi, Cheney. Thank you so much for that presentation. We appreciate that. We did have <clears throat> a couple of questions here. Um, 
One question is what works best these days, auction format or shop format? It depends on what you're selling. So if you're selling something that's rare, um, something that you really don't know the price of, but would be determined by the market, then you can do auction. But if you know the price of your item and you know the absolute amount that you want to receive for that item, then yes, uh, you would want to do a fixed price listing is what we call it on, on our site. Yeah. Um, so um, I had asked Andrew earlier um, as far as like support videos or anything, yeah. what kind of support is available to people so that they can learn how to use the platform or if they need help setting their shop up? Yeah, yeah. we have so many different uh, types of support virtually right um, through webinars which is something that I do and through seller school as well and you can find that you can find most of them on eBay for business um, at YouTube so you just type in go to youtube.com type in eBay for business and you'll be able to find our page we have many different videos there for you um, or of course calling directly in and our teammates who are frontline facing, which I've been one before, we know the site like the back of our hand, right? We can do that without even looking at a screen telling you exactly where you need to go to set up your store. So definitely reach out. So um, obviously, you know, uh, this is focused on native artists and so many of our native artists are in very rural communities uh, just like I am <laughs> I was having severe problems you know with my internet connection earlier so how um, you know is there because I know like um, you know is there an app is there a way that you know perhaps some of these artists who you know they may not have access to a computer maybe all they have is their telephone and I know in some areas that's all I can rely on is cell service um, because I don't have connection to the internet. So is there, yeah. is that possible for people? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, a lot of our sellers are actually strictly mobile, right? Like strictly on their phone and that's how they manage their business. And we've grown so much over the years with making sure that you can do everything through the app. Um, so you just go to either Apple or um, Android and go to find eBay for mobile, right? So just type in eBay and then you'll be able to find our app there. Okay, let me look over here just to see if we had any more questions. Ken, did you have a? Sorry, I'm muted. All right, uh, we did have a couple questions come up in chat. Uh, one was somebody wanted to know uh, what what's working best these days, uh, auction format or shop format? Yeah, so we kind of touched base on that just a little bit. Uh, it really, like I said, it, it depends on the type of item. So that could be auction you're using because you're sh you're selling something that's rare or and is driven by the market for the value, or you're using a strategy to clear out some of the inventory that's sitting there for a while. So you can use auction style for many different ways, but most sellers are using fixed price. Okay, and then one one which uh, is very much in a stump the expert vein, uh, but is very important to a, to a lot of artists is what is eBay's policy on the sale of walrus ivory by Alaska natives through eBay? So um, it's it's not allowed. It's not allowed due to the marine mammals policy that we have, um, and a lot of that you can be able to find directly through our help pages as well. Okay. Well, th thank you very much. I, I appreciate your coming out here and uh, appreciate your making the time for us. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, again, I'll be sticking around as well. So thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Tracy? Uh, and I apologize Hello. if I'm pronouncing your name wrong this whole time. It's Riddler, correct? Or is it, it is, Riddler? yeah. Okay, That's right, good. Riddler. All right, thank, thank you so much. Sorry, I just got to open up my system preferences, apparently. Okay. And if we have a little bit of time at the end, we can circle back with some more questions, too, for people. Perfect.
All right. I don't know if it's going to let me share. Can everybody see that? Yes, Tracy, we can we can I, see I can. it. Perfect. OK. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, I'm Tracy. I'm the partner and operations manager for Build Native at Shopify. Uh, I'm Shim Shan. I'm from the Kitsum Kalem First Nation in British Columbia, Northern British Columbia. Um, and our, our nation actually is on both sides of the border. So I have family all the way up into Metlakatla, Alaska. Um, our team, sorry, fiddling with my slides. Uh, was formed in October 2020. So Shopify's mission to make commerce better for everyone was the catalyst for the formation of our team. Uh, we're an Indigenous-led, Indigenous-built team. Um, and since Stand Up, we've witnessed incredible growth and innovation time and time again. And there's a, a real palpable Indigenous rising that's really exciting to be a part of. Um, this is just a picture of our, our chief operating officer, Toby. Uh, he was really the, the one of the biggest uh, champions of our team being stood up, which is really great to have that kind of support at the executive level. So before we get into the specifics of the, what our team does, um, I can talk a little bit about what Shopify is. So we're a cloud-based multi-channel commerce platform uh, designed to help you run your business uh, for whatever reason. If it's a website, if it's a brick and mortar store, if it's a restaurant, if it's a service, uh, we support that. Um, we, we allow you to design and set up and manage your store across multiple sales channels, including online, brick and mortar, retail, Amazon, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, Etsy, eBay. We have custom API that connects to all of them. So you can seamlessly control everything from one centralized admin, including payments, shipping, it's pretty great. Um, our basic plan starts at $29 a month. Uh, our particular program, Build Native, offers extended free trials, onboarding support, uh, education, and a community space on Slack to learn from other Indigenous entrepreneurs. Uh, we also host domains. We sell domains. Uh, we have free Shopify email for email marketing, newsletters, our own in-house payment gateway, but we also connect to hundreds of other their third party gateways if if you're comfortable with that. Uh, we have Shopify Capital, which is based on your revenue that you make. Uh, we connect directly to USPS, UPS, FedEx, Canada Post, Australian Mail uh, through API. So you see and you pay for real time shipping rates. You can print shipping labels directly from your Shopify admin, saving you a lot of time. Um, and all of those rates are pre-negotiated. Uh, we also have 24 seven support, uh, phone, email and live chat. I think um, most platforms are pretty, like they're they're very similar. Um, the the learning them, like every platform is going to be a different language, but and I find that's kind of the easy part. I, that's not a I never see anybody not taking the technology and being able to use it. The common things that uh, that our team specifically works on is, and the common themes that we see, especially with Indigenous women, um, is pricing your products correctly knowing your value um, and really valuing your expertise. Um, I think that we're the, no, it's not I think, I know we're the original entrepreneurs of most of the places that we uh, are from. Um, so I'm never working on product development. I'm never working on storytelling. I really focus on getting people comfortable with valuing themselves. Like I see women who are the most incredible beaters, um, have the most beautiful pieces of art that only pay themselves minimum wage and sometimes below that. So most of it is self-confidence in self-determination um, and really being your own boss. That's that's really what we focus on. And so as a team, there's a, there's a whole bunch of things that we value, uh, but truth before reconciliation, uh, we must speak the truth before we can make things better. And we must use our power and privilege to call attention to systemic barriers and injustices. And we must know where we come from before we can know where we're going. Uh, we also really believe in co-create and shared prosperity. So we will co-create as much of our content as often as possible. Uh, we're never going into a community to be like, here's Shopify. Uh, we go into a community to build relationships and ask what specific barriers that specific community is having. And then we work together on solutioning for those problems. 
Uh, we also build for the long term. So we like to think like engineers and build strong infrastructure and foundations that allow us to make our work a legacy. Ideally, we put ourselves out of work because Shopify's product platform and employee base reflects the future of commerce. It's better for everyone. We're slowly getting there. Uh, celebrate and storytell is huge. We take every opportunity to pass the mic to Indigenous entrepreneurs and shine a light on their work in mainstream spaces and bring Indigenous worldview into the collective consciousness of entrepreneurs. And throughout this process, uh, we celebrate all of their achievements. Uh, we share time and space. We go where the people are whenever possible. Uh, we share time and space with partners and entrepreneurs. Uh, we build relationships before we build solutions because that's, that's what we find is the most authentic. Uh, we reduce barriers and we create pathways, not pipelines. So we strive for really simple solutions that save people time, effort, and money. And we create many pathways that let people self-select into experiences and challenges that meet them where they are at. Um, and we avoid the term pipelines because we find it very divisive. And then the other thing is data sovereignty. So Indigenous people own their own data uh, and should have free, prior, and informed consent to opt in and out of anything that collects their data. And that's something that we will not compromise. So within Shopify, um, one of the things that we do, I'm just going to play this little video. One of the things that we have is called the Shop app. Um, it's pretty great. It's, uh, sorry, my speaker notes have gone away from me. Um, it's our in-house accelerated checkout. It lets people save their credit cards and shipping and billing information. So if you opted in on any Shopify store, <clears throat> all of your orders um, and all of the, this option at the checkout is always there. And then within the app, it, it's really great. I love it. It accumulates all of your orders that you've ordered. So you don't, you don't longer have to dig through your email to find what you've ordered. You can track it all in one place. And this is like just a, like not just Shopify. If you've ordered from a big cartel store, if you've ordered from Amazon, as long as that email is registered to the app, it'll pull the shipping information from there. But then what we also do from our team is we advocate uh, to be included on the curated lists. And you're gonna, just going to see down here, we have one for Indigenous owned businesses, so people can opt into this. Um, it gets displayed to all the millions of users that have Shopify, and you can just easily shop and add Indigenous created uh, products and services right to your cart from the app, which is pretty great. I'll just let it finish. We have, we have a, quite a few uh, Indigenous merchants on our platform. So the next few things, I'm just going to do a really high level. Um, I'm not going to touch on all of our partnerships. But there we go. I don't know if this is going to play properly, only because uh, playing a video during presentations can get a little bit dicey. So I'm actually going to link it here because um, that tends to get a little bit weird. So I'm just going to talk a little, little bit about this, and I hope everybody takes the time um to watch the present or the the little video after so the Tlicho nation is a community that we worked with uh they're from the northwest territories uh, they have very limited connectivity coupled with entrepreneurs that may or may not have the inventory or the funding for a standalone store uh, so they came together they actually approached us which was amazing um, and we were all in so they've come together to create a community store uh, where anyone from the community can sell their products. And it's a really great solution for both of those barriers when it comes to um, <clears throat> not, you know, not having the capital to spend $30 a month on your own website um, and then and also not having the connectivity. So they have, they have a shared connection through the band office there. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to post their link to their online store. And I'm just, I'm going to try to put, I'm going to try to play this video, but please tell me if it gets a little bit choppy. Tracy, this is Lynn and, and it's not really choppy, but there's no sound. I don't know if there's supposed to be sound or not. There's definitely supposed to be sound. Um, that's okay. So I posted the link, everybody watch it. So we also, um, one of the things that we work on is, like education that is applicable and uh, more representative for Indigenous communities. Um, I think there's enough data out there, enough resources and research uh, to show that we have a really low 
uh, uptake of institutionalized learning and that kind of talking head. Um, it's really hard to get away from that type of education when it comes to e-commerce because you know domains are domains. You have to you have to learn the nitty gritty of domains. Um, but even it's not just Indigenous people. We're seeing this type of like method that we're using at Build Native be really successful across all entrepreneurship uh, demographics. But specifically for us, we really like to show representation. Um, we really like to show people using the technology to get back to the land, to get back to their culture and to be really proud of their culture. And so we showcase merchants like the Tlicho Nation uh, and we do really like high level productions so that we can use that and like inspire people and motivate people um, to, to participate in entrepreneurship. So it's it's a really great video if you if you can watch it later. And we also do um, Indigenous storytelling. So we had an event, I will post it here. It's a wonderful re recording of our event. We, we're going to do this every year. It's called Ishka Day, which is the uh, Anishinaabe word for fire. Um, my colleague is Anishinaabe. He's from Kitigan Zibi. And he came up with that wonderful name or was inspired by uh, Ishka Day. And we just celebrate Indigenous storytelling. So Jen Harper, uh, from Cheekbone Beauty was there. Um, there was Bernice Clark from Wausau Soaps, Scott Wabano and Sean McCormick. Um, really, really great stories and like all about their entrepreneurial journey. We had uh, Snotty Nose Res Kids, which was really, really fun. A really exciting presentation. And we're going to be doing this again in July, but I suggest everybody go again, look at the link. Um, it was a really, really fun event. And we're trying to build community, right? Like I think um, that's what's missing in a lot of these programs and a lot of these platforms is you learn something um, and then like where's your community right we're a collective people like we thrive when we're together and you know if we can create people who are sharing and inspiring and leaning on one another and learning from one another that's going to really push indigenous people forward indigenous business forward like we're not we're not used to being independent and you know, trying to be the best and trying to make the most sales. We're really used to participating in reciprocity of knowledge, reciprocity of community and reciprocity of care. And that's that's one of the things that we really, really focus on. Uh, we also uh, develop strategic partnerships. Um, this one is with Google, uh, but we have, we have a relationship with TikTok and with Facebook. Um, and we just really, we ask for the moon most times. <laughs> so, you know, they, they get access um, to honestly to the social capital of working with us and to understanding how to move their businesses forward to be more applicable to all entrepreneurs um, and all people. And we get to leverage, you know, what what they have. So we get workspace, domains, Google ad credits, um, extended free trials, all these kinds of things from these really big partnerships. And we, we just hosted a Google and Build Native event in February. Uh, that was really great. We learned about YouTube, how to build ads, how to use Google Analytics, and all these things are can be really boring and dry, but it was a really fun event, um, and we're hoping to do more. We also do um, quite a few partnerships. We have partnerships, actually, globally. Um, the newest one is called Hawaii Rising, and so that was um, a partnership with Mana Up. They're an accelerator program that works for all businesses in Hawaii. And I met them in August uh, and they were wanting to do an all native Hawaiian program uh, that kicked off in January. Um, and we're helping local entrepreneurs build skill sets, confidence and resources to scale and take their companies global. Uh, I'm here I'm here on Kona right now. Uh, we just ran a community event yesterday. Um, in addition to Hawaii Rising, we have multiple partnerships within APAC. So Te Fada Huka Huka, Rise 2025, uh, Manaki, Knowledge Water in Australia. And we're, we're always looking at, um, at new partnerships to do. Our, we're, we're focused on Indigenous-led, Indigenous-built, and really uplifting the community. And yeah, that's, uh, that, that was my short but sweet presentation. I hope everybody liked it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you, Tracy. So we'll follow up with some questions. So the first one I have to ask you, because I knew you were in Hawaii. How's Hawaii? It's pretty, it's pretty great. <laughs> no one's ever going to stay bad, right? 
<laughs> well, we really appreciate you taking time out to do this, being being oh, there. No I, I, it's a sacrifice, I'm sure, to be here with us today a little bit. No, it's wonderful. <laughs> uh, so I actually have, uh, this is not so much a question as a comment by one of our viewers. Um, and he says, you know, Tracy, I need your assistance. He has a Shopify site. However, um, the shop has gone nowhere since 2017. It's hosted by GoDaddy. He just needs to reach out to someone who understands his situation um, as a Native American and his products and what he does. Um, so is he welcome to reach out, you know, with an, uh, a link or an address where he can talk to someone there at Shopify about his situation? Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. So we have um, a link, our website, shopifyindigenous.com. You can see all of our upcoming events, uh, partnerships that we do. If you have a partnership request, um, you can also get in contact directly with with our entire Indigenous team there. Uh, we also have a Slack community. If I think what, what you mean is that your domain is hosted by GoDaddy. Um, that's easy to switch over if you're wanting to switch that fully over to your Shopify site. But just go to that site. Then you should be able to get in contact. Um, and you can put in a request to be added to the Slack community. So our Build Native Slack community is... I think there is around 200 Indigenous entrepreneurs right now. There's five support advisors. Anybody that we partner with, for instance, like we had Google um, in February, they'll be there. All of our partnerships have their own dedicated channels, um, and you can just go there and ask questions and lean on one another for support. So Tracy, if someone else um, has a more specific problem, maybe something that's not appropriate to pose to the community, how would they, um, you know, what support is available directly with with Shopify? Are they? Yeah, so we have 24-7 support over chat, email, or phone. Um, we're there around the clock, and it's a phenomenal support team. They're the, they are literally the uh, experts of the platform. I worked in support for about a year and a half, and the information that you retain, that they retain, is absolutely incredible. And our platform changes, like it's constant changes. Um, so they are the best people to to leverage. I leverage them for events. Actually, I'll get support advisors uh, to come and man the chat and and do all kinds of things. Um, so yeah, definitely call support. Uh, my best piece of advice: call them before you get frustrated. Because this, when I was working in support, people would call you like, "I've been trying this for hours." Like, don't try it for hours. <laughs> They're there to help you. They're there to support you. Just give them a call. There's no stupid questions. Well, so obviously, um, being a, an indigenous program there with Shopify and working with so many people in Indian country, um, so you're, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there is for some of us in very rural communities, rural places, you know, we don't have quite the infrastructure um, that makes it always easy to do anything online. Yeah. Um, so how 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 can Shopify help them with that challenge? Do you guys have an app where they can? Yeah, so this is a, a good example, beanpaints.com. Uh, this person's name is Anong Beam. She's the most incredible person. She makes her paints, just her pigments come only from Manitoulin Island, from around her. Um, she built her entire store on her cell phone and she ran her entire store on her cell phone for two years. Uh, it's a common problem that we see like access to connectivity, um, even sometimes with um, like cell phone connectivity, that's not available. And that's where like with the Tlicho Nation, you know, finding that community hub and working directly with the community to be able to solution for an entrepreneurship co-op or, you know, a program where they can teach people like entrepreneurship without having to do a full jump in, right? Everybody runs off a community store. Shopify also fully supports the program broadband everywhere. And we have some very strategic partners um, in terms of internet and connectivity that we work with when that's a problem in rural communities. So Tracy, do you have perhaps a, a good success story or something that you've seen so with many any of the native entrepreneurs so, that you've worked with. <laughs> it's, it's always a success story. Always, it's uh, I like I, it's it's really interesting how often it happens. Like it, but it's it's all the time. Beam Paints is amazing. Um, you know, Sister Sage is amazing. Cheekbone Beauty, like Indigenous women are really leading the charge in this like resurgence of Indigenous entrepreneurship, and it is incredible to be a witness to. So sisterstage.com, 
Um, we're actually from the same nation. Uh, Lynn Marie is just absolutely amazing. She she actually makes all the soap in her house in her own based business with her sister, um, and they are just nailing it. She had Entrepreneur of the Year, Small Business of the Year. Uh, Cheekbone Beauty just launched a massive campaign, um, and they're moving into the U.S. now. If you haven't checked out their website, they're fully sustainable brand, fully sustainable packaging. Like they're really not falling into that Western capitalist model where it's profit over your morals, you know, and they're really taking indigenous worldview to new levels within business. And it's just incredible to be a part of. Um, yeah, there's, there's tons. I could, I'll, I'll just post a list in the chat as I go of businesses you should check out. There are so many. Eighth, so from the U.S., eighth generation uses Shopify, Louis Gong. He's done incredible things with entrepreneurs in his accelerator program. Urban Native Era, what a phenomenal store. Like, I could watch that YouTube or IG channel constantly. Uh, B Yellowtail, that's awesome. Um, yeah, OXDX Clothing, there's so many. There's just so many great ones. Awesome. Well, thank you to Shopify for really the focus that you guys have put on Indigenous communities and, and helping all of our Native artists and craftsmen. I think that's really a good a good leap forward, something that, you know, yeah. is needed very much. So Absolutely. There's just what they said, do we have any specific Alaska Native stores? Uh, the Sealaska, um, the Sealaska program is on Shopify. I believe that was all of the questions. Thank you so much for sharing, Tracy. Can I turn it over to you? Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, so we're not going to leave without at least addressing Etsy before we, we pass over to Lynn and the, the building your own website. Uh, if you were here for our last presentation, we had a, a really good talk from uh, Mary Beth Timothy, I believe it was. What, from what one of the Timothys on their uh, experiences using Etsy. So I've actually go slideshow. Just pulled a. <clears throat> it turns out that if you go to your Etsy page, it shows all the things that you have looked at recently. And I couldn't get it to disable. I suppose I could have logged out. But anyway, I, I liked the uh, look that the uh, Timothy has had for their Etsy page. So I, I did put this out. And if you get a chance, you should definitely check out the February 10th presentation, which is, as I mentioned earlier, available on the uh, USPTO's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so Etsy requires that you do handmade, vintage, at, or craft supplies as, as a seller. Uh, they have listing fees, transaction fees, and payment transaction fees. And I really wish that I could be better at explaining this to you, but they actually rolled out a new fee structure this week, and I just can't get my head around it, and it's going to take me a little bit. But definitely go check out the uh, presentation we had last time with the Timothys to, to get a good sense of how they used Etsy and how, how you could potentially use Etsy as well. I just didn't didn't want to go without at least mentioning them though. Almost out of bananas. Short to be left. Okay. Get me some more lunch meat for here too. Okay. Uh, Lynn, you're on mute. Some snacks. I could use some more at home. Well, and I was really on a roll there. Oh. <laughs> um, I of course am great friends with Mary Beth Timothy, and I actually helped her when she started her Etsy store. Um, so some things I can tell you, you know, um, I remember when, you know, cause I went to Mary Beth and said, Hey, have you ever thought about selling on Etsy? And she's like, I don't know what Etsy is. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, it's this great platform for selling handmade goods, you know, uh, different things. I, I think that you would do really well on it. And so, um, we worked with Mary Beth to get her store open. And a couple of weeks later, I, I called Mary Beth and I was like, well, how's it going? And she said, crickets. And I was like, well, something must really, you know, that's strange. <laughs> you know, that's not what I expected. Um, and through some research, we were able to, you know, figure out some of the things that you have to do within Etsy. And it may be this way with, you know, some of the other marketplace platforms. But we uh, put in some of those best practices. And I remember she called me and she was like, oh, my gosh, I just made my first international sale. 
you know, and it, she's just gone gangbuster since then. And, you know, here's where the story I think is just, I'm so thankful, you know, that she's doing this because when the pandemic hit, most of us know that, you know, um, some of the places where we might go to sell our arts and crafts, the powwows, the art markets, when the pandemic came, those things shut down. And so all of the venues that Native artists were using for in-person selling just came to a screeching halt. And that is actually where Mary Beth excelled because she had her store already up and running on Etsy. So during the pandemic, she was getting orders like crazy. Her her store just grew by leaps and bounds. Um, and it was just really good that she, you know, she didn't know, none of us knew that it was coming. Uh, but thank goodness she got in ahead of that curve. And so I think that's probably, you know, as we're going through this series, one of the things that we want to instill in people is that um, we don't know <laughs> what the world is is going to be like, and we have to be proactive in how we uh, do business and and that's why e-commerce is such an important tool for for native artists and craftsmen um, but thank you for discussing a little bit on etsy i know that there yes there's some new free structures i i have an etsy store i don't have my head wrapped around all the free new free structure either so all right well with that out of the way i guess we're passing the baton to you lynn Okay, um, let me see if I can share my screen here and just see. Okay, Ken, can you see that okay? Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, well, so we've gone over a lot of different things today, um, examples of marketplaces um, and different e-commerce platforms that you can use to grow your business online. And at the beginning, Ken mentioned something about, you know, another option is for you to create your own website. And so I just wanted to go over a few of the benefits of selling on your website as well, you know, some pros and some cons uh, before we close. So, you know, one of the pros is, is that customers, whenever, if you have your own website, then whenever the customer comes to your store, they're really focused on your items. Um, and you're not gonna be having their attention, you know, go all over the place looking at other competitors' products. They're really there on your site. And so all they're gonna see is your stuff. And so that is definitely one of the benefits. And you may even be able to charge a little bit higher prices because, you know, um, if you do go to some place like Etsy, obviously for a product like I sell, People, if they type in that product, they're going to see, um, you know, not only my product, but products, similar products that other Native artists are making. And, um, you know, it, it may make you feel like you have to kind of compete a little bit more on price when you're doing that. Um, another good thing about having your own website is there's no listing or selling fees. So when you sell on your website, you really free yourself from these fees, which means all the money that you make is going to be yours to keep. And we were just talking about some of those Etsy fees coming into effect. Uh, but keep in mind that, you know, depending on how you process your payments, you are still probably going to have some uh, to pay some fees for payment processing. So it's not that there's not going to be any fees. You're just not going to have things like, you know, a listing fee um, and some of those things. Having a website is also a really great way to increase the credibility of your business. And I, I really think that regardless of whether you sell through a marketplace or whether you have a website, or even if you sell through a marketplace that you should have a website, I think every business should. And um, the website is really going to be the hub of all your marketing and selling effort efforts. So on your website, you can share additional information about your business um, that really is going to help create trust with buyers and make them for, feel more comfortable, you know, about buying from you. Um, and you can also um, find that there's ways to connect your website to a marketplace platform. So a minute ago, we were looking at Mary Timothy, Mary Beth Timothy's Etsy shop. Mary Beth and her husband, John, actually do have a website. And if you go to their website, you know, you'll read a lot more about them, about their accomplishments as artists. 
and then you'll also be able to view their products and they're able to link their website to their Etsy store. So when you're on their website and you actually click the shop button, it takes you seamlessly into Etsy and you almost don't even realize that you've left the website. So that's really great to keep in mind. <clears throat> Uh, another great thing about having a website is that you really do have control over the design of your store. So, you know, a lot of times in marketplaces, whether it's, you know, Etsy or some of the others that we've heard from today, um, you know, your shop it does have to adhere to the look and the design of the marketplace. Um, and so if you have your own website, you know, you can design it however it fits your brand, however you want to display your products. But I don't want to, you know, there's, I think there's a, a platform and a way that fits everybody and not, you know, one thing is best for all people. Um, so please don't think I'm downplaying marketplaces because I'm on, on marketplace. I love it. Um, but so here's some drawbacks about selling on your own website. You know, whenever you start, uh, you're probably going to have not as much traffic. You're going to have really kind of a low level of people coming to your site. So uh, generating a customer base and getting regular buyers to your website is going to take some extra time and effort. For instance, you'll need to be active on social media. You'll need to make sure your website is optimized for search engines, and you're going to need to spend additional money for advertising. But when you are using marketplace platforms like Amazon, Etsy, eBay, you know, they're out there doing a lot of that marketing for you. Um, and you're probably going to end up reaching customers that you never would have reached through your own efforts. And I can tell you that every person that I've sold to on Etsy is somebody that I never could have reached on my own. They're not from my community. In fact, I don't even think I've made a sale to anyone within my state. Um, so that's one of the benefits that is fantastic for me because I'm not a big social media person. I don't have a lot of time to go out and market my own products. Uh, also, you know, if you build your own website, you do have to have some technical skills, <laughs> which can be a challenge. So you're not going to have quite as much support when something goes wrong on a marketplace platform. You can, you know, reach out and get in touch with their support staff and get the problem fixed. But when you sell on your own website, often you're going to be faced with problems that you need to overcome yourself. So, um, but there are some good website builders out there. And if you do get a good website builder, at least they should have some kind of level of technical support. There's also going to be initial startup cost with the website. These are upfront costs um, such as, uh, you know, paying the, the hosting fee and everything. Um, so you may not be paying listing fees, but you are going to have those monthly fees that you're going to have to pay. And most people can really easily build a site using a website builder. But another thing is that if you were to go out and say hire a website designer, the cost to get your store up and running could be thousands of dollars. But on the other hand, you know, you can start a shop through most marketplaces um, like you can go through the process of setting up the shop and start selling your product all in the same day because it's usually typically a very easy process to do. <clears throat> Another thing about, you know, using a marketplace, I mean, you know, we talked a minute ago about how a website can help build trust with potential customers because through your website you are able to share a little bit more information about yourself you're able to add more content that maybe you're going to be able to add to a marketplace but one good thing about a, you know any kind of marketplace or working with these other platforms is that there's already some established customer trust uh, you know so if you start your own website today no one's going to know you which means they're probably not going to trust you either. But these marketplace platforms are really well established in the market and customers have been flocking to these sites every day to buy from sellers all over the world. And one of the thing ways that um, to me it really builds trust is that marketplaces provide impartial reviews of your products. So customers have a lot more confidence when they're going and making a purchase from your store. And then I would say finally um, is community support. And again, you know, I, I mentioned a few minutes ago that a, a benefit of having your own website is that you don't have a lot of other competitors products on there that your potential customer is viewing. But 
one of the things that you have to think about is when you are on a marketplace, you know, you heard uh, Tracy talk about this with Shopify that they have um, the Slack. In fact, at all of them, they all have, you know, some kind of community place where you can go and get information. Um, so, it, you know, in one sense, you may view them as your competitors, but you know, that's a lot of access to a lot of other community sellers that you can tap into. So when you are having a problem with your store, you have this community that you can reach out to and say, hey, I've got this issue, you know, does someone know how um, how to fix this problem? And I have found that um, at least through Etsy that the, the Etsy community has been really great in answering any questions that I have and helping me with any of those issues that come up. And then finally, I'll just say, you know, an, another benefit possibly is of having the website is that you do have more control over your store policies. I do know, you know, we had the question come up earlier about the sale of walrus ivory. Um, and so if you're a native artist and that's one of your products or something and it's not going to be allowed on, you know, marketplaces, then perhaps having your own website for that would be a good option for you. So with that, I think that is the end of our program today, Ken. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you to close us out. All right. Well, I believe, Ken, I believe. Ken, before, before we get, we there, get there, there was there a was question a that was asked uh, by Deborah Franklin of all of the speakers today. Okay. She wants to know whether the responsibilities for compliance with any applicable laws, for example, her, her concern specifically is the European Union General Data Protection Regulation or GDPR. And uh, so when she's gathering the information necessary to complete a sale, to send a product, uh, she's concerned that if in any way those acts violated the EU GDPR, who's responsible? Is, is it the platform's responsibility? Is it her responsibility? This is a rather, uh, this is potentially a complicated question. I suppose my first question would be whether the EU GDPR applies to any particular scenario she may identify. But I was just wondering if any of our speakers um, this afternoon have any views on this particular issue. Yeah, for, uh, in terms of Shopify, um, you control all of your own merchant's data, so that falls solely on on the merchant, um, on the business owner. That would be similar for Big Cartel, but we also we have a page on our help site, just help.bigcartel.com slash GDPR, uh, that kind of helps walk you through what you're responsible for with GDPR. That's good to know. Thank you. We actually did have another question that I promised to ask at the end and pose to all the presenters. So thank you, Susan, for stopping us right. <laughs> before ending. Um, and so this question is, I would like to learn how to negotiate uh, or contract with UPS, FedEx, and others to reduce shipping costs, which is a major expense especially because being able to offer free shipping is such a huge selling point. So I'll just let that open if anyone has any any advice or comments. Um, so we don't, Big Cartel, again, uh, we don't sell shipping labels directly through our service. You would connect to a shipping partner. Um, the one that I, that I use, uh, since I'm in the US, usually shipping to US people using USPS is called Pirate Ship. Um, and it's a really easy platform. They usually, I think they get a reduced rate of around 30% off uh, postage. But um, that, that would be my recommendation is to look at some of those others or like ShipStation. Um, and the, yeah, there's a lot of those integrations that can connect to your shop. For eBay um, specifically, we do have shipping directly through our site um, and the accounts are through UPS, FedEx, and through USPS. 
So we do have discounted prices based on the products that you sell when you're shipping directly through eBay. Uh, Shopify is a lot the same. So we have our own API that connects to most shippers in every country. Um, but really a shipping strategy is something that you really need to sit down and look at uh, to make sure that you're saving as much money as you can because it will eat up your profits. And sometimes that means taking a look at your profit margins and maybe increasing that a bit. Like there's going to be some destinations that are more expensive in shipping just by the geography of it. Um, there's going to be some that are local that are going to be about $5. So you really want to find that happy medium uh, of shipping costs where you're going to make a little bit of money on some shipments and some shipments is going to be the pure cost of, you know, that you're just paying directly for shipping. Um, and that takes trial and error, right? Like making sure you have the right packaging, making sure your weights and your product weights are in there properly on Shopify because we do real time shipping rates and that connects directly to the shippers. Um, your product weights have to be very, very accurate. So I recommend getting a scale, weighing your packages, um, making sure that your default package that is calculating your real time rates is accurate. Um, if you have like multiple sizes of products, like from, you know, small to like very big, like a, a lamp or something, you'll want to use a shipping app that has more bespoke functions for advanced shipping settings. So you can determine box size per product. Um, but it's, it's really a shipping strategy and the free shipping isn't actually free. Uh, that's just worked into your product cost. So that's just a, a tactic for marketing. Uh, it does work well. What I would, for most small businesses, I wouldn't use it as a tactic in the beginning. It's going to eat up too much of your profit and you're probably going to scare a lot of customers away from the increase in product price. Um, and I think it's pretty typical especially with indigenous owned businesses like I, I'm going to buy something that is culturally relevant. I'm going to buy something that's handmade and sustainable. I, as uh, that demographic of customer, I'm okay paying for shipping. Like I'm okay paying a little bit of extra money that I know it's not some drop ship plastic thing from some warehouse. Right. So that that's okay. Um, and just make sure that you're, you know, it, it's ironic. It's like this weird psychological thing. Uh, if, if a shipping cost is like $13.96 in the checkout, for whatever reason that turns people off. Um, so if you find your average cost of shipping is $13.96, just go and create a shipping rate that's $15. So that 15.00 for, I don't know why, it makes people feel more comfortable. And they're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. But if you throw some weird numbers on the end of like 96 cents, they're like, nope, that's way too much. But you can actually increase it and it'll be okay. So it's just, it's really always looking at what you're spending at your analytics, where it's going, where you can save money, your profit margins, et cetera. It's, it's, it's a big thing, but there's like, I think across all platforms like eBay, big cartel that we're there to support you and you just really leverage your community and the subject matter experts around you um, to help you develop those strategies. I just wanted to piggyback off of that, Tracy. So like, you're exactly correct. So free is not always free. Some things that I like to suggest to my accounts when I'm working with them is doing a shipping promotion. So if you know that, you know, your items are going to ship in a priority mailer or however they can ship to fit together, you can do a promotion with those particular items and offer, you know, free expedited shipping or just free shipping in general um, to make sure that you're still providing something to your customers, you know, some sort of value. Um, and it could be around whatever types of, um, you know, maybe you're trying to clear out some things or maybe you're trying to increase your sales around Christmas time or whatever works for your business. Um, starting a promotion would be helpful for that as well. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, that's <laughs> I think that's something we can definitely uh, revisit maybe in the future too, because there, there's a lot of information there. Uh, I guess at the, at the moment though, uh, I'd like to thank all of our speakers for, for coming out today. I, I appreciate you taking the time out of your schedules. Uh, I'd like to thank all of our, par, all of our uh, attendees today for uh, coming in and having such excellent questions and uh, touching on some things that we would not necessarily have gotten to without the prompting. Uh, thanks people for posting the links. A lot of those look really great and I look forward to spending some time over the weekend reviewing them. And I hope to see everybody on May 12th for our next presentation on building an identity. So thank you very much. <laughs>